Hey guys, Al Bigley here. I've been asked to do some videos about how I put together a lot of my cosplays. And this is the first of those videos, which I hope you will enjoy. And instead of covering all of my cosplays, I'm going to take them one at a time. So let's start with Spider-Man. Overhead, hey there, there goes the Spider-Man. In the chill of night, at the scene of a crime. Now, I've loved the Spider-Man character since I first discovered him, and how I first discovered him was in 1972 with a very odd piece of merchandise called the Raw Comic. You see it up here. Now this LP was advertised locally in New Jersey where I lived on all the kitty stations because those same kitty host after school TV stations would show a lot of cartoons including the 1967 Spider-Man cartoon. I soon realized there was a Spider-Man comic book and this was the first one on the stands I picked up right after the death of Gwen Stacy. So it's no wonder that this, to me, is Spider-Man, the John Romita Sr. 60s and 70s version. And you see a lot of Spider-Man costumes out there now, a lot of Spider-Man cosplay, but it's the movie version or it's Spider-Man in armor, which is all good. Everything's good, everything's creative, everything's valid. But I wasn't seeing my Spider-Man. And really, you might say, what's the big difference? It's a guy in a red and blue leotard, really. A guy in a, you know, one-piece uh, spider-themed outfit. But what made my Spider-Man different was everything was very stylized. Uh, there's a certain way you drew the head, especially the eyes. They're not these big saucer eyes he has now that makes him always look surprised, as if his spider sense is always going off. Um, more distinct and bold web lines, a certain spider insignia on the chest and the back. Uh, I paid a good deal of attention to the colors and things like that. And um, people do recognize it at conventions as this Spider-Man. Lots of times I hear it looks just like the 70s Electric Company Spider-Man or the later 70s uh, Nick Hammond live-action Spider-Man. And of course, it looks like those because we're all starting from the same place. The then current version of Spider-Man, all of us taking that two-dimensional image and making it a three-dimensional living, breathing, moving character. Um, so let me show you a little bit about the costume and some of the challenges and ways I went about designing it. Okay, here you see uh, my design. I, I use a certain kind of, uh, well, I use Photoshop, and there's a certain kind of um, pattern or platen the manufacturers overseas give you, which is kind of, there's a bit of a learning curve. It's kind of hard, as you can see, to figure out where everything lines up on these particular costumes, the way they sew them together um, for some of these Zentai manufacturing companies. Especially with Spider-Man, when you've got all the web lines that have to join and meet and all that good stuff. So this took me a little bit of doing. And again, you notice very bold, uh, very graphic stuff. Um, I wanted really to get uh, the colors especially. Sure, Spider-Man is red, but originally he was meant to be black or very dark blue with that red. Not very many spiders are red and blue. Many are red and black. I went in that direction, and I, then I submitted this design and got it back, and there were a few problems here and there. Some of the, the subtle muscle shading came out a little funny. Um, there were some places where the webs did not line up quite right. That was easily fixed with a marker. I do work as a graphic artist in my real life. That was very easy to fix. Um, but I knew, of course, I would have to also do some things to create the iconic mask and head, and a few other things I'll show you right now. So here is the finished printed costume I got back. It's very different working with more traditional costumes like I've been doing. Costumes with belts and capes and boots. 
This is pretty much, of course, a one-piece costume with not a lot of accessories. Um, one mistake I made was, of course, I looked at other people's patterns for Spider-Man, the more modern versions, and of course I went roughly by where they place the web lines on the mask, because most people know this little dot is meant to be right here on Spider-Man's head. Somehow I designed it, even though I used other designs, somehow I designed it where the dot ended up up here. Luckily, I knew a local seamstress who was able to take in some material here after I tried it on. Got everything lined up pretty well. Now, of course, with Spider-Man, I knew I'd have to do this. He doesn't wear outer boots or anything, so I knew I would have to do something about his feet. Anyone who's walked around on concrete or just outside in general in socks knows it's not comfortable. On a hot day especially, it's not comfortable. What I did was take the bottom of a swim shoe made for the beach, hollowed it out and just used the bottom, got in the leggings of the suit, used something called shoe glue, you can see it right here, and had to stand in the costume for about 15 minutes with that wonderful gunky feeling between my feet, the costume fabric, and the sole. But I gotta tell you, this stuff really hangs in there. I've never had to repair these. You can see I'd already painted the outer portion red and tried to continue some of the web lines here. And did that easily for both soles. Something about this costume also, and this fabric, some of these Zentai costumes, you do want to avoid lots of rough contact when you can with walls and concrete because this stuff tends to fray easily. It doesn't really rip. It can, it can fray and rub. Anyway, here's the back insignia. Now, I did use some of Alex Ross's uh, designs for that iconic rear insignia there. And you notice, too, I did something different with the emblem. I wanted the really big, thick 70s spider emblem, but you notice there's also a bit of, it stands out a bit because there's a bit of a uh, orangey drop shadow behind the emblem. And that's because I also grew up in the 70s with the infamous Ben Cooper Halloween costumes where they were always trying to incorporate day glow colors so kids could be seen at night. That was really done to reassure the parents that your little kids wouldn't get run over running around dark streets at night. Just thought that was a cool little tribute I could throw in. Also, getting back to the 70s, you notice the spider is kind of isolated in a little circle where the web line design does not meet the spider. And that's a tribute to, and some of you older people already know, the very first edition Nego Spider-Man action figure, which I just thought was a cool, cool design, cool way to go. So there's the costume. It was very interesting to make. So let's see the costume. And uh, once I've got it on, once I got Spidey coming in to show it to you, I can also tell you a bit about how I uh, created the mask and the uh, facial look, how all that fits together, how it all works. So let's go see if we can't uh, call in Spidey. Is he gone? Is that Bigly guy gone? Boy, what a ham. He goes on and on and on. Well, here's the costume. For the head, of course, I've got, as you see soon, a half shell underneath the top portion. And that's in order to make the eyes work. These are magnetic eyes, and the shell has the receiving magnets glued to it, and the fabric gets caught between the eyes and the underlying shell. I cut off the lower half of the shell as you see, it still gives me a pretty good profile, but it lets me breathe much easier. Most of the shells Spider-Man cosplayers use with these costumes are the complete shells, making it a little bit difficult to breathe. So here are some pictures of the finished costume. 
Of course, I ordered this from the Zentai Zone manufacturers in China. You notice I didn't go in for a lot of muscle shading. I'm not a big fan of that, whether it's the realistic kind or the more comic book drawing type. Like most companies, they use a Lycra spandex they print on top of making these suits. They sew them together themselves. There's just the right amount of shininess with that material and that kind of printing. Easy to sew and repair. Pretty easy also to move around in. Overall, a good job translating my designs into reality. Now, I also had a local seamstress friend add what today's young people call glider wings. Back in our day, we just called these the underarm webs. Something to give Spider-Man an interesting profile or silhouette. And what she used was a netting we found and basically made it so I had a nice reinforced edge here, sewed into the sides. Gives me lots of room for movement, just like the comic book Spidey. And just adds that nice silver and bronze age look. You'll also notice I added two cut and painted wooden dowels for the little exposed portions of the web shooters you would see in the comics. Lots of fun. All right, let's take a look at the mask. I made a ton of these eyes out of felt and white mesh called buckram. And boy, as you will see, I made a ton of these to get them just right. But as you'll see on the back, three magnets have been installed. They do the job wonderfully. Every now and again, a magnet might come off. I had my same seamstress cut the eyes. Of course, the, the manufacturers overseas that make these costumes will do some alterations and cutting and sewing, but had these cut right just in place. And as you're about to see, there's also a shell under here, as I mentioned, with also cut eye holes, obviously, or else I wouldn't be looking at you now. Now, again, the upper shell does give you a bit of an odd kind of profile. You can see it a bit, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Okay, let's take a look under the mask. So as you can see, underneath the mask, I wear a shell. Now, we've all seen these shells. Usually they have a second half, a bottom half that I cut off of this because it was a little bit hard to breathe, especially under all this material. Without the bottom half of the shell, I can at least, when I need to, pull the material close to my mouth and get a good lung full of air. It's a little tough when you've got a shell that's pushing the material outward. And yes, the shell in its complete form made for a much better Spider-Man profile, that straight line from nose to chin. But this still works pretty well. And of course you can see the magnets attached for the magnetic lenses. Let me grab one. And of course, when wearing this, the fabric, of course, goes between. And like I said, visibility is very good and not a problem. Now, um, you see too, I have this, I made a custom strap also, just for keeping it in place, because without it, it can ride up or down. It can kind of hurt your nose a bit, even though I sanded this a great deal once I cut the lower half off. And the, uh, the balaclava, that's for you, Lindsay Stewart, is worn for comfort. So that's pretty much how I made the mask and face work. Took a little bit of engineering. I made so many of those eyes, I cannot tell you. Just take a look here. But I wanted to get them just right. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been drawing this character. And the secret is getting just the right amount of black, the right amount of white. The brow is heavier toward the top and sides. It took a lot of doing. And then, of course, at one point I got them where they would be a little too close, a little too far apart. You don't realize what goes into making. So now I look like Birdman. But you don't realize what goes into making it look like the iconic Spider-Man. All these little touches that are part of it. So thank you for joining me 
And if you like the video, please comment, please subscribe, give me a like, let me know if I can answer any more questions. I'll do one of these for each of my characters. I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate your kind words. A lot of work is in these costumes, about four to six, seven, eight months for each build. Of course, that's built in uh, for errors, for corrections, things like that. But it's a fun hobby. It's creative. It's a new outlet I found for creativity. And anybody can do it. You can spend a lot of money. You can spend no money. It's all good. It's all, it all counts. It's all creativity. And every bit of that is a good thing. So thanks again. This is Al Bigley saying thanks for watching. And keep your webs untangled. Hey, if you want to see my Spider-Man in action, just click the link above for a fun little video.